very mindful this morning that there is a lot of anxiety in the town and in the country. In March, we didn't really know what lockdown was. We do now, and the thought of even partially facing it again is difficult. So today's gospel is vital because it includes five key moments of great anxiety, along with a surprising sixth moment, which challenges and radically inspires and offers immense and necessary hope. Picture the scene. Two dusty roads intersect in a market square in a town surrounded by vineyards. The sun has not yet risen. The workers wait anxiously, looking out for the landowners. Will they be picked? Will they have money to put food on the table that night? As dawn breaks, the landowner is there, and he picks the first few, those who look strongest, perhaps, or most agile, maybe those who look the most desperate, or those who shout the loudest. Those who, pick, who are picked are relieved. It's a hard day's work ahead, but it's a fair wage, a denarius for a day. The picked ones move off. Those who are left stare at the road. Will other landowners come? Most workers get picked at dawn, but they're desperate for work and there's nowhere else to go. So they wait. Travel across parts of Africa, Latin America, Asia, right now, the same scenes are played out today. This story is not history, not at all. And it's fruit for our supermarkets that they're picking. It's why it matters to buy fair trade. Three hours later, the landowner is back. Those sitting at the side of the road stir. Does he really want more workers? Yes, he does. They pile towards him. He picks again and off they go. How are the ones who are left feeling now? The day is getting warmer, but it's still only nine o'clock. So they wait, anxious hoping, willing, praying, and at midday the landowner returns again and more are picked, but still some are left and the heat builds. And let me pause that narrative there because I want to tell you a true story. This weekend is the 10th anniversary of the visit of Pope Benedict to the United Kingdom. Back in September 2010, on his day in London, I was able to be with young people in front of Westminster Cathedral and at Hyde Park, and some of them walked between the two places, and along the walk were some protesters. Near to the entrance of Hyde Park, a young man from an English diocese stopped to talk to a protester who was shouting loudly about the evils of the church. Whether it was the youth, the freshness, the innocence of the young man, something about how he approached stopped the protester shouting just for a bit and they chatted and after a while the protester said I really need the toilet will you hold the placard I will said this young man now I don't know what the placard said but it must have been quite a shock for the rest of his diocese to see that young man holding an anti-papal protest sign as they walked past the protester came back the young man handed back the placard but something had changed the tension had gone out of the protest. Back to the market square, the labourers waiting, and now it's fiercely hot, the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, an hour with resonance for us because it's the hour of the crucifixion. In that heat, the remaining workers wait anxiously. Will the landowner come back even now? Yes, and the pay is still one denarius. It seems unbelievable. Word has gone round. Perhaps others drift to the crossroads. Maybe they're the ones who used to wait every day and never got picked and they gave up hope. Perhaps they're addicted to drink or depressed. They find it hard to get out of bed and harder still to imagine that anyone wants to employ them. The 11th hour. The 11th hour, five o'clock in the afternoon, the working day is coming to an end, just an hour left. How utterly desperate, how outrageously hopeful do you have to be to believe you'll get work at the 11th hour? The landowner comes and he takes all of those who are waiting, all of them, and they do an hour's work. 
Five times the landowner came to the market square, five times a surge of anxiety, will I be picked? And the story's not over yet. But remember that protester. What about if, as the day went on, he thought more about that encounter with the young man and put down his placard? What about if he came into Hyde Park and heard Pope Benedict say, as he did that afternoon, each of us has a mission each of us is called to change the world, to work for a culture of life, a culture forged by love and respect for the dignity of each human person. And the protester's heart melts, and he wants to follow Christ, but it's the 11th hour. Should he be let in? The antidote to anxiety, dear friends, is hope. And today's gospel overflows with outrageous hope. Hope even at the 11th hour. Hope that this world with all its unfairness and suffering is not all that there is. Today there are people queuing at food banks and job centres, desperately searching for work online, anxious about today and tomorrow. Our task in this bit of the vineyard, the kingdom of God on earth that is St. Edward the Confessor Romford and wherever we are, our task is to do all that we can to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to bandage the wounded and to visit the sick, all in Christ's name, all looking towards the eternal vineyard. It is hard work, so to speak, in the heat of the day. And into this, at the 11th hour, come people who have denied Jesus, people who've mugged and knifed, people who've stolen and lied, and they are welcome too. But the story has one final twist, for the work is done and the workers queue for their pay, and now there's fresh anxiety. Will he pay me? What will he pay me? The ones who've been there all day see the late arrivals getting a denarius and they think they'll get more. But everyone gets the same. That's God's judgment. Does it seem unfair? To me, it seems like a sign of amazing hope. Whenever and however we arrive at the vineyard, and no doubt, even if we were there at dawn and then drifted away for a bit and found our way home later in the day, God welcomes us in. In Hyde Park 10 years ago, Pope Benedict said, in times of crisis and upheaval, God has raised up great saints and prophets for the renewal of the church and Christian society. Only Jesus knows what definite service he has in mind for you. Be open to his voice resounding in the depths of your heart. Even now, his heart is speaking to your heart. Be open to Jesus' voice speaking in your heart. Work in the vineyard. Welcome others to the vineyard with open arms, however and whenever they arrive. Be the saint the world needs in this time of crisis. Be a sign of outrageous hope. And if ever you are anxious, rest in the words of today's psalm. The Lord is close to all who call him.